Today we're going to bring a little bit of a demonstration of the features of the TCMU2. Um, this is the baby brother of the TCMU3, our colour model. Very, very compact little unit. Super lightweight uh, with the probe and uh, tester, it's less than two pounds in weight. Um, on top of the unit we have a port for the USB cable to connect to a PC. We include the cable with the product and also the communication software and special software on the PC side. Other one obviously here is the probe. Comes with rechargeable batteries, we include the rechargeable batteries. Uh, there is a seal around the battery enclosure. On the back we even include a screwdriver to take the screw out for the batteries. Um, and of course the charger we include as well. So it's a membrane keyboard, monochrome display, um, very water resistant except for the ports on top, uh, so splash proof um, and it can be in temperatures below zero to very very high temperatures and still function perfectly well. Powering the unit on, hold down the power key for a few seconds and it's uh, on a little time thing so that you can't actually accidentally bump it off. You can set the display timeout the brightness of the display, whether you want backlight off or on to conserve the battery. Um, within the, the display here you can see if I scroll through this, we're on measuring right now, there's calibration to calibrate the unit for different materials, archiving which is the place that you store the tests and you can recall those later on uh, for review or it's from there that we would upload the tests to the PC. Settings, so this is the area where we do change the settings for the color, sorry, the, not the color, the brightness of the display, the timeout, uh, tolerance, various other things that are under the settings area. Memory card, every probe that is attached uh, on the UCI side for ex this one here has memory inside of the probe. So the calibrations are actually stored in the probe itself and can be copied back to the memory card if we wish. Information is information about the company and contact information. So it's always uh, in the unit, you don't have to search for it. If we go back here to measuring, and I hit the select button here, the device now is saying it's ready for a test. And here I can hit the H value button and change the hardness value for HRC and HB. And then in Vickers, and you can just scroll down these to choose a different one, even user definable. Uh, also for the um, tensile strength, the material is taken from the Brunel values to give a very, very close approximation of the tensile strength of the material also. Now the fact that these are shown here in HRC, HB and so on, and we can have different material types right now, it's just steel, um, doesn't mean that they are all pre-built into the unit. In fact, ultrasonic testers, they're not, because there are such a broad range of different material types, and we can get right dial right down to a specific grade of stainless steel, for example, if we wish, we can't build those in, so it's really up to the user other than steel, where we do have steel and calibration test blocks for the UCI. These are NIST traceable, made in the USA, um, and they are supplied with certificates as an option. The reason they're an option, by the way, is because many companies already have a bench tester, and they can use those test blocks to calibrate the unit for steel. So just going back out of this, I'm going to stay on HRC. And you can see up here there is a small icon that shows it like, like a little V. It means this is the Vickers diamond on the end of the part. Now talking about the probe, we include with the probe the foot that other companies charge for. Um, so screwed off, you can still do a test here by pressing down and there is a test done. Um, it's not just a matter of holding it against the part, you've got to press down with the load that the, the tester is set up for. In this case, this is a 50N, so it's about 12.5 pounds of load. But as soon as the tester senses that, it recognises you can't move the probe around, it's got to stay very, very steady, otherwise you'll get erratic readings. So when we screw this foot back on again, it makes it easier for a new user to use because they can put their fingers around the side and then just press down and get a result. So you can see here it jumped from 41 to 43. The reason was I was hand holding it with one hand and not really balancing it properly, properly so it was giving me an erratic reading. But now if I move it, you'll see that the readings are very accurate. They're within the tolerance of the plus or minus 1, 1 1.5 for HRC in this case. On the end of the foot, you can screw off this face here. There is a V, so for doing uh, round parts, 
screw it back on again, reversing it back onto the thread. We can now do round parts like this and get it exactly perpendicular to the part. Like I said, this is all included with the device. Now, in, on the display of the device, i am just got it set up right now to show what the result is of each test. And I can go into the select mode here and see by using this X button, right now it's normal or I can show the statistics and this shows the statistics for I've done four tests, the average was 42.7, uh, the deviation max and minimum was 2.9, that was because of that erratic very first one, and so on. And if I just back out of this and go back to normal, I can also delete the tests if I want to by hitting the select button, and I want to delete the last test, and so it's deleted that one, deleted that one. And if I go back now into uh, here to show the statistics, you can see we're just down to two tests and it's still showing that very erratic first one so the deviation because of the poor first test first test I did by hand holding it with one hand and not the foot um, is showing that variation so let's just go back again to normal and I'm going to delete that one and the art so now we're right back to scratch or I could have just hit delete all the other one, thing that we have inside the device is under select here is smart and smart is in the u3 and in this u2 device and what this means is that if i do do an erratic test it automatically re will reject it but initially it doesn't know what the hardness is so it's going to show here in not a solid display so it just shows the border so there's 42.9 43.1 and it says that because those tests were all with intolerance it's now showing the average of the result but if I bring up a different material here that I know is softer and say I, I did an erratic test on this by moving around, okay, the value will be automatically rejected from the totals. Very, very nice little feature of the unit. I'm just going to go up now to select and I want to hit the exit button. And I'm now going to go into the ca uh, calibration. Under calibration, we automatically calibrate the uh, probe for HRC and Brunel. And you can see ST is showing this is for steel. But if a user wants to test in stainless steel or alloy steel in this case, or in other materials that you might call C1 or U1, um, you would calibrate it yourself. So if you've got stainless steel, you would have uh, three pieces of steel of the same material type of different hardness and you'd use the calibration for that very very quick and easy and it's going to be shown in a different uh, video. So I'm going to hit the back button here, I'm going to power the unit off because I want to change the probe to the D-type probe. D-type probe here, uh, it's a rebound type and this extends the capabilities of the unit where like many devices or products that we use in, in daily use, um, the UCI probe is not perfect for all kinds of materials, all sorts of conditions. The UCI probe is great for uh, ferrous materials, hard materials, uh, but not any good for granular materials like cast irons, uh, very soft materials like uh, just standard grade uh, aluminums and so on. The other thing that we can do with this device, because the impact body inside is very highly precision machined and the calculations that are done based on this bouncing off the part we can set up calibrations for this for different material types which we have now done with the unit so it mirrors what can be done with uh, standalone uh, rebound hardness testers so if we look here under calibration you'll see we have several propagated so we've got HRC, HB, Brunel, Vickers and we have it in steel uh, alloy steel, stainless steels, and cast iron. We could also do it for aluminum. But because our range of test fields here is limited, and we don't have as many options for different material types that are all set up within the uh, U3 device. So it's another difference between the two. Uh, you have your own user calibratable ones, and you can overwrite these also if you wish to create your own material. So say you never uh, measure stainless steel, you could overwrite those and use it for brass or copper, for example. So if I use the back button here, 
going to go back to measuring, select this, and you can see the display is a little different. Um, we have to tell the system what the orientation is uh, of the test probe. Uh, with the UCI it doesn't make any difference because uh, gravity doesn't come into play because this has the little uh, impact body that moves up inside the shaft. It's grabbed by pushing down on the handle, little grip has grabbed the top of it, so now moved up in the body. And when we press the button on top, it fires at the part. Now I'm still in uh, smart mode, which I don't want to be in, so I'm just going to hit the select button here and say delete all. Oops, you, I'm going to exit that. And I want to go back into measure. And I want to change the mode to normal. All right, so here uh, we're back on normal mode, and if I push down, okay. So you can see the results are very, very accurate. They're very, very repeatable. Um, the other nice little feature we have inside here for this is we still have the statistics. All right, and smart but we also have signal and signal shows the curve that is done from the acceleration past the coil of the impact body and then the rebound rate going the other direction shows this in the the, uh, the display just for reference purposes if I want to change the angle and I was talking about this before right now it's zero but I want to flip it up and I want to do it at 180 degrees in other words I'm going to get, do it backwards the system has the calculations inside mathematically to compensate for gravity and the, the, the uh, spring load and so on and the bounce of the, the, uh, the impact body. And flipping around I can go to 135 degrees, 90 and so on. Because it's really only important for this, this or this, otherwise the device is super accurate. So there we go, a few features of the, uh, the TCMU2. Super accurate device, very fast and easy to use, interchangeable with uh, D-Type probe, the 50N probe UCI, the 10N probe UCI, um, doesn't have the connection to the uh, wireless printer that the U3 does, and it doesn't have the plug-in to recharge within the unit, you've got to take the batteries out to do that, but we do include the charger. And of course the colour display and the fact that with the display it's not possible to have as many fields uh, as there are with the U3 for the more extensive material types. Thank you.